We're putting Dizzy Genie to the test at Disneyland. Man fam, we are at Disneyland Resort today and going to ride some of the most popular attractions across both parks while using Disney Genie. To put Disney Genie to the test, we have made a list of 10 of the best, most popular attractions here in the Disneyland parks, and we are going to see how quickly we can get through all of those lightning lanes. Along the way, you know we're going to share our best tips and tricks for using Disney Genie. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we are going to attempt to prove our hypothesis that Disney Genie is easier to use here in Disneyland than it is in Walt Disney World, specifically by comparing it to a video where I did 10 of the most popular attractions across the board Walt Disney World parks recently. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. But first, Coffee. Disney Genie 101. Disney Genie is comprised of three different systems. There is Free Genie, which is just different components of the app allowing you to make personalized itineraries, check out the tip board, check out the dining tip board, predictive wait times. There's Genie Plus, which is what replaced FastPass Plus and Max Plus here in Disneyland, which is a per person per day cost to skip the lines at several different attractions around the parks. And there are what I call fancy rides, but what Disney has called individual lightning lane a la carte selections. Those are attractions that if you want to skip the line at them, you can do that, but it's an individual cost per person per ride to do so. Let's dig more into Genie Plus because that's the thing that most people purchase. Genie Plus here at Disneyland starts at $30 per person per day and a big difference between here and Walt Disney World because in Disneyland there's only one option. You pay the per person per rate fee again starting at $30 that's what we pay today and you have access to Genie Plus at all of the attractions that are included across both parks. In Disney World however in the last several months they rolled out staggered pricing based on which park you're going to. So it costs less to go to Animal Kingdom than it does to go to Magic Kingdom or you can purchase the park hopper option. Here at Disneyland, it's all the same thing. Do note that Genie Plus can sell out for the entire day, and it often did during the holiday season here in Disneyland. Genie Plus grants you access to over 20 different attractions between the two parks here at Disneyland. You can ride each attraction one time using Genie Plus, and you're going to book them on a next available basis. Basically, I like to think of it as having a FastPass kiosk in my pocket on my smartphone. Remember the good old days when you'd have paper FastPass and you'd walk up to the kiosk and it would say now distributing 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. and you put your ticket in and whatever it spit out, that's what time you had for the attraction. That is what the digital tip board is. It's giving you the next available time to book that attraction. But another big difference here in Walt Disney World is how fancy rides are booked. If you're used to going to Walt Disney World, you know that fancy rides are not next available. You get to pick and select and reserve a specific time when you're booking those. That's not the case here. They are next available just like Genie Plus. You're still going to pay for them individually, but when you look at the tip board, it's not going to allow you to select what time you went throughout the day. It's going to show you the next available time. However, just like Walt Disney World, you have a max of purchasing two fancy rides per day, which actually works out pretty well right now because there's only two fancy rides in Disneyland here in Disney California. For an adventure, it's Radiator Springs Racers in Cars Land, and over in Disneyland Park, it's Star Wars Rides the Resistance in Galaxy's Edge. One thing I do want to note is that the word Lightning Lane, that's just the queue that you're going to go through at the different attractions. Both Genie Plus attractions and Fancy Rides have Lightning Lanes. That's just the physical place you're going to walk through as opposed to the standby queue. It used to be called the Fast Pass queue. People often use the word Genie Plus and Lightning Lane synonymously, like I'm going to book my next Lightning Lane or I'm going to book my next Genie Plus. You can use them interchangeably, but just know Lightning Lane is the physical place at the ride. Both both Genie Plus and Fancy Rides have them. I know it gets really confusing. But the biggest difference between Walt Disney World and Disneyland is when you're able to book those lightning lanes for both your Genie Plus attractions and your Fancy Rides. In Walt Disney World, you've got that 7 a.m. wake up call for Genie Plus, and when you can book your Fancy Ride depends on if you're staying on property or not. Here at Disneyland, you can't book anything until you have stepped foot into a park. In fact, for most guests, you can't even purchase Genie Plus until you've stepped foot into a park. There are a few exceptions where certain kind of packages and tickets allow you to purchase it for your entire stay in advance, but if you've got a magic key, most guests, you can't even purchase Genie Plus until you walk into the park. Which actually does make for a more relaxing morning because there again is no 7 a.m. wake up call to book urgently that first Genie Plus like there is in Walt Disney World. Attractions also tend to sell out less here than they do in Walt Disney World because there's so many locals that come to Disneyland. It's just not as popular of a service, thus feeding into my hypothesis that it's easier to use here. Basically, if you're planning to purchase Genie Plus, the best way to do so is as soon as you get into the park and then start booking that first attraction. We sauntered in at a leisurely 10:30 this morning, purchased Genie Plus immediately, and booked our first attraction, which was Spider-Man Web Slingers, for less than an hour out from when I was booking it. 
I should also note that every attraction in this park was available within like an hour, an hour and a half from booking. Most attractions within 10 minutes from when I was looking to book. And I looked over at Disneyland as well. The only things that were further out than like an hour and a half or two hours were Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Matterhorn, and Indiana Jones Adventure. Even Rise of the Resistance I could have booked for right now. Last thing I'm going to note is when you can book your next Genie Plus attraction. Note, I'm not talking about fancy rides. Those are their own thing. You can book those whenever you want. Again, they're going to be booking on a next available basis, but those do not count against you when you're booking your Genie Plus attractions. But as far as Genie Plus attractions go, you can book that next one either A, once you've used it, which is the most likely case here in Disneyland, B, if it expires because you didn't use it for some reason, or C, if it's been 120 minutes since you booked the first one, whichever one of those things comes first. And note, you don't have to keep track of that. Disney's going to do it for you. If you look at the top of your tip board, it'll say when you're able to book a next Lightning Lane, and that's either going to be now or a specific time. But a thing I talk a lot about in Walt Disney World is stacking and that 120 minute rule and what that means. And you need to know it's just not that common in Disneyland. If we run into it, if we end up using it, we will talk about it more. But usually here, it's more of a ride a ride. What am I going to book next? Ride a ride. What am I going to book next? So that one's an hour away. Well, I'll go get a snack or ride something that doesn't have a lightning lane and then I'll go about my day. It's usually way easier to do it in Disneyland. I hope we're going to prove that today. Whew. All right, that was a lot of talking. Again, we'll be sharing more tips and tricks and using the system in real time as we go throughout the day today, but I'm ready to ride a ride. Where did Alan go? Breakfast burrito, coffee. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Hopped over to the cappuccino cart and picked up a breakfast burrito as well as some cold brew coffee because you gotta fuel up for a day of Genie Plus science. This is a steak, egg and cheese, and avocado chimichurri breakfast burrito. And it sounded delicious, so here's yours. Thank you. Cheers. Boop. That is delicious. Very warm all the way through. <laughs> As Molly's demonstrating, a lot of steak, really fluffy egg, and that avocado chimichurri is creamy, but has potato? a- Potato? Yeah. That's little, potato. Little potatoes in there too. The avocado chimichurri. Bright and light, but still creamy because of the avocado. How, how is it that this is at a, you know what? It's delicious. Thank you, Disneyland. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. All right, had some delicious yeah. breakfast. Saw some spider stuff. Yeah, I guess I should do some work. <laughs> Always good to have the data. <laughs> Now we are headed to tap in for our first attraction and thus begin the clock for the day. A difference with this app, if you want to use your phone, is you're going to click on the buttons where you have it and you're going to click redeem. And then you're going to swipe these in the machine. So if you have a Magic Band Plus, you can use that. But if not, this is how you're going to do it on your phone. Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure team puts you into the Worldwide Engineering Brigade open house as hosted by Tom Holland. I, I mean, Spider-Man? Nope, uh, Peter Parker. Peter Parker is hosting this, certainly. And things certainly don't go awry when an invention continues to duplicate itself and potentially take over not only Avengers Campus, but the world. And certainly the fate of the world is not put on our shoulders as we pilot these slinger vehicles to eliminate the Spider-Bot threat. None of that'll happen and an excellent demonstration of spiders slanging. Oh, yeah, yeah. You do realize that Max is not here. It's just me, so like, it's, yeah, you're, you're good. <laughs> now that we have tapped in at Web Slingers, you can see that the top of the tip board says we can book another one now. So I'm gonna scroll through and see what's available. Might do Guardians, might do Incredit Coaster, might book something over at Disneyland and hop over there. So we're gonna see what's available. Peter Parker. Hey, what's up? I'm Peter Parker, and here at Web, we got access to some pretty awesome tech, like Vibranium from Wakanda. If you want to sling a web, all you gotta do is sling your arm in the direction you want to shoot the web, and that's it. It's all awesome. Couple of things. When looking at the lightning lanes prior to going into the pre-show, I ended up booking Indiana Jones, which was showing like 3.30, and then I refreshed the tip board, and I got one for 12.15, which is 45 minutes from now, which is amazing. Part of the reason I want to go over to Disneyland is because a lot of the other attractions on our list here are better in the evening time when the sun goes down a little bit, so I think it will hop over to Disneyland and then come back to California Adventure. Number two, I noticed two cool Easter eggs in the pre-show that I had not noticed before. 
which I pointed out a lot of these in those secrets videos, but one, I noticed these like toolboxes and they were all labeled. And some of them were the kids that you know are here, like uh, Luna, like Harley, but I also noticed Cassie L for Cassie Lang, um, who's Aya Man's daughter, and then Miles M, which is Miles Morales, which is really fun. Also, when the spider bots are getting everything and destroying a bunch of stuff, one of the things they get is the original Iron Man mask that Tony Stark first makes in the first Iron Man movie before he explodes out of his, his jail. I'm exhausted, yeah. my arms hurt, but I got the highest score I've ever gotten, and I feel incredibly proud of my work today. Uh-huh. I also participated. You were beating me for like half the ride. Yeah, and then it started to started to all fall apart. Go for the green ones. Yep, I know what that means. Web Slingers colon, a Spider-Man Adventure TM, is a great attraction to use a lighting lane on. It used to be a fancy ride, it's not anymore, and it's incredibly popular because it is a family ride and everybody can do it. So I would say it's a great choice for your first lighting lane in this park. I would say for your first lightning lane in this park, it's this, it's Guardians, or it's Toy Story Mania would be my choices. And to make Doctor Strange proud. Your favorite. That's what people think. We are going to Why be... Why do they think that? That's a great question. We are going to be keeping track of some math today. We are going to be comparing the posted wait time versus the amount of time we actually waited in the lightning lane. The posted wait time for Web Slingers, colon, a Spider-Man adventure, TM, was 40 minutes. We waited five. That's a difference of 35 minutes and a great way to start the day. And now we're off to Disneyland. Right. Yeah. You really are making Dr. Strange so proud. I'll be sure to tell him when we see him. He's gonna be so happy. After I tell him that you're his favorite, he loves that. He does, he's, he's, he's known to be very pro being the favorite. We have made it to Adventureland to ride Indiana Jones Adventure Temple of the Forbidden Eye. TM. The legend continues from Disney and George Lucas. Oh wow, that is a very, that's a subtitle and a sub subtitle. That's a lot going into one attraction. This is, in my opinion, the most popular attraction here in Disneyland. Uh -oh. Indiana Jones Adventure is an attraction that takes you on an adventure with Indiana Jones. Huh, funny how that works. Anyway, in this particular heist, Indy is trying to save us for after we stare into the eye of an ancient deity and bring all doom upon ourselves. But because he's Indiana Jones, you know, he saves us, but not without a couple of hijinks first. This attraction has a 46 that is four six inch height requirement and uses the same exact ride system as Dinosaur in Disney's Animal Kingdom in Walt Disney World. But uh, this one's better. How dare you disparage Dr. Grant Seeker? First of all, I never once disparaged Dr. Grant Seeker. I did, however, say that I think his foolhardy and reckless attempts to send us back in time in a way that is unsafe and untested after having been told by the authorities within his own department was foolhardy and a risk that nobody should take. All for what? Aladar? A dinosaur. Bringing back dinosaurs. Uh-huh. But your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. So now give you counsel to seek out a miraculous journey. Even your transportation devices are ingenious pouches. Tracks. I love that ride so much. And they recently added some updates of technology, like they made crisper projections and it just like breathed new life into this classic. Chef's kiss, a must ride. Absolutely. The listed wait time was 50 minutes. We waited 13 in the lightning lane. We'll which, take it. Yeah, love that. 
Now, Indiana Jones is one of the most, if not the most popular Genie Plus attraction here in this park, so it's worth prioritizing and getting if that's what you want to do in Disneyland. Oh, I also noticed a really cool Easter egg in the Indiana Jones queue. Right when you enter, there's a note from Abner Ravenwood, which is Marion Ravenwood's father and the professor that Indiana Jones worked for when he was a budding archaeologist. Pretty cool. Also, while in line after scanning in, went and looked at what we wanted to do next and trying as much as possible not to ping pong around the park. So I was aiming for Pirates of the Caribbean, which originally showed 110. I refreshed the tip board like twice and it popped up at 1255, which is about 30 minutes from when it was, which is perfect because as a note, the lightning lanes may take a little bit longer here in Disneyland than Walt Disney World because they literally don't have the same amount of space as Disney World for the queue. So they're designed a little bit differently. You're still going to be in much less of a line in the standby queue, but it's not going to be a walk-on experience most of the time. That means we still have about 10 minutes until we can tap in at Pirates. What should we do? I have an idea. They're so good. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Here's a little theory for you. Hold on. What if I took beignet dough okay. and fried it in a circle with a hole in it? Should I have a Mickey shape? Yeah. I don't think I'd like that. Delicious beignets is consumed. Did a quick little mobile order at the Manjula bar. And now we are headed to my favorite ride, not only at the Disneyland Resort, but my favorite Disney ride on planet Earth, the original Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, Pirates of the Caribbean is not normally a part of Genie Plus. There's normally not a lightning lane here. However, Haunted Mansion is currently down for a long refurbishment, both to remove the Nightmare Before Christmas holiday overlay and because they're doing uh, some upgrades to the grounds around the mansion. So to compensate for that, they added lightning lane here at Pirates, which tickles me because I want to ride it and I don't want to wait. Pirates of the Caribbean, a classic. It is the gold standard of Disney Imagineering. Opened in 1967. It is the last attraction that Walt himself worked on. It is thrilling. It's a boat ride. It is got an incredible song from Exitensio. It's just, it doesn't get better than this. There is so much cool imagineering and detail that went into this attraction. I talked a lot about that in our Disneyland Secrets video. It's just... It's just iconic. It's just the best. And I'm so excited right now. Uh, but you know what? We tapped in, and I'm going to book something else for After Pirates. Pirates of the Caribbean here in Disneyland is just perfect. I don't know if I will love a Disney attraction more than that ever in my whole life. Um, Shanghai's Pirates might give it a run for its money, so at some point I'll have to ride that one. Um, but wow, it's just it's just the best. We can leave now. No. Okay, you're right. There's plenty of more fun to be had. When we tapped into Pirates, I took a look at the tip board and the next thing I booked was Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway, which wasn't available until 440, which is the furthest out lightning lane that we were looking at. It's also one of the most popular lightning lanes. So I went ahead and locked it in. And then once we were done with the ride, as we were walking over this way, I fiddle faddled a little bit, which is my phrase for just refreshing the tip board over and yep. over again. You're gonna use that modify feature to do that. And then you can modify your lightning lane choice within this park, so nothing at DCA, for a different time for that ride if something comes available or a different ride. So I was refreshing the screen over and over which is slowly walking over here and a 245 time popped up so went ahead and locked that in which means we now get to ride it in about a little over an hour about an hour and 20 minutes and in the meantime in between we can go ride rise of the resistance oh we're going to spa to spa it's exciting better go to batu we entered the pirates of the caribbean queue and it had a posted wait time of 30 minutes our actual wait time two minutes 
That's better. That's, yeah, That's inarguably better. Is not better. Bad, but two is better. Inarguably, two is less than, therefore, better than 30. There you go. But, two by two. Would Dr. Strange say some numbers are better than others? Or do you think Dr. Strange is impartial to all numbers? Do you think he has a favorite number or a lucky number? Well, there's like the golden ratio, which I think he'd probably like a lot. He actually mentions it in Spider-Man No Way Home. And then uh, I bet he would also enjoy some of like the more prime numbers that are really pretty cool. Um, there's also like imaginary numbers which are really, really great. I really enjoy those. For or non-Euclidean. For someone who says Dr. Strange isn't their favorite character, it sure seems like you know a lot about Dr. Strange and what he'd like. I like math. I just like math. Math is great. Okay, Steven. Star Wars Rise of the Resistance has a 40 that is 4-0 inch high requirement that is one of the most technologically advanced and, in my opinion, best attractions in theme parks right now. It is just such a beautiful combination of different ride vehicles, ride types, and experiences. It's just wonderful. And I don't think I've ever ridden it in Disneyland. Have you, Malls? I've also not ridden rides here because it's a carbon copy of the one at Walt Disney World. I usually prioritize rides that we don't have in Disney World or ones that are different. And the time I probably would have ridden it was when we came last year with like a bunch of members of my family. But Alan and I pulled cool, fun, and uncle duty and took my nieces who weren't tall enough to ride. And we, I rode the teacups with one of them. Yep. While you pushed the stroller while the other one was sleeping. Oh, listen, I was a great nap time supervisor. That's true. And then we met Moana and we ate um, any food they wanted I bought for them because I don't know what to do when children cry so i just want them to like me and um as a cool parenting tip if your kid asks for sugar and then more sugar four minutes later just buy it for them it's my best parenting tip just that give your feels, kids whatever they want that feels like more of like the cool aunt and uncle route it but didn't cry you know what that's true you know so but we also did not have to deal with the ensuing sugar high well we passed it back off to their parents but in the in the time we were in charge things went great uh-huh and that's the takeaway that as a friendly reminder, Rise is a fancy ride here as well as Walt Disney World, meaning it was an individual cost to skip the queue here and access the lightning lane. Queue 75 minutes, cost to skip though, $26 each, which is not a small amount of credits, but you know, in often cases, time is money. And again, fancy rides function different here. It's a next available basis. I'd been keeping my eye on rides all day and pretty much at any time I wanted to ride it, it was available for within five or 10 minutes of that time. So I didn't book it till I knew we were ready to ride rise so that it could fit in easily amongst waiting for some of those other lightning lanes. <laughs> An incredible attraction down to the fact that I get teary on it regardless of where I went riding it uh, and the fact that the big blasters don't work on either coast 
there used to be this very cool effect when you're riding in your car and there's the big blasters on the left and the space fight happening out the window on the right. The reason that your car like stops and starts is because the big blasters would go like this and your car, your droid, R5 was smart enough to like pause so that the big blaster could go forward and then go for like, but now on neither coast did the big blasters go forward. I hope they fix it at some point because it was a cool effect. Yeah. Well, truly an incredible attraction, as you said. One of the best. Listed wait time of 75 minutes. Yeah. We waited two. I'll take it. I will yes. take it. $26 is a lot, obviously, per person, especially when you start adding up more people than just one or two. Um, but it's 75 minutes. It's usually at least an hour, if not longer. If you're not going to pay for it, I do recommend rope dropping this attraction yeah. or kind of waiting till later in the day. Um, but one thing to note is that this attraction often closes earlier than the park does. So make sure you look at those wait times or those uh, park times for this ride when you're planning out your day. Now we do have a few minutes before we need to be in Toontown, so I say a, a quiet stroll through Galaxy's Edge is, is yeah. on the docket. Yes, let us saunter, saunter. through spa. Saunter, okay. S strut? I don't need to strut. Stroll? I don't want to stroll. I, I want to stroll. I don't want to strut. I don't want to call attention from the first one. Because if I'm in spa, so I'm probably trying to do some work under the table with the lava business, and I don't need anyone paying attention. So we shouldn't strut, we shouldn't saunter, we shouldn't stroll, we should sneak. Subtly. A subtle sneak. Yeah, this bit's gone on very long. Yeah. As we sneakily stroll through Galaxy's Edge, I must ask you a question. Okay. As a bigger Star Wars fan than me, uh -huh. what's your favorite part of that ride? I love when Kylo Ren's lightsaber breaks through the top of the elevator. I just think that's a really, really cool effect. Uh, and on R5 it goes, Wah! Yeah, it's just, I mean, there's so many cool things about that attraction, but watching a lightsaber cut through metal is sort of like the biggest representation of nerddom in my head uh, outside of the beautiful story elements but like if you're talking about a singular moment me watching a lightsaber cut through metal is cool I also think that part's cool obviously the big set pieces like the AT-ATs and the stormtroopers are cool I don't think that the moment when Kylo Ren does the force chokehold on the in us it gets enough credit the way the effect that they do that when you're in the uh held in the cell and they take all the light out of the room and they have this like pressure and vibration through the room it's a really cool way to do that effect look look there's new space popcorn they told us that this just arrived within the last month it's kublog spiced savory popcorn it's cajun and lemon <laughs> cajun gets up your nose with that spice oh it's so good my daddy pedro a brighter, citrusy, like, <laughs> more, um, peppery Old Bay. The one thing Disney World had yeah. was Cat Sackos. Yeah, this is better. I don't know if it's better. It's different. This one's definitely more savory. That one's more sweet. That one tastes like tricks with a little bit of heat. So I love that one. Just don't breathe in while you eat this. But this is actually, like, got some heat. Wow, that's phenomenal. Also, what's a Kublog? Um... <laughs> Don't breathe in while you eat it, by the way. If this is how I go, it's fine. A kublog is a six-legged, antlered, glossy-furred uh, beast found on the forest moon of Endor. It's I've like got, a six-legged deer, that's or like a elk. Little, <laughs> little bears live. Ewoks. <laughs> little bears. Why is coughing the side effect? <laughs> Are the Ewoks related to Chewbacca? I don't know. I mean, based on their physiology, they might be distant relatives of the Wookiees, but... You think it's kind of like a bear versus like a, I don't know, fox or something? <laughs> I guess in space it depends on who populated where. Because, like, the Wookiees are on Kashyyyk. And yeah. the Ewoks are on a moon of Endor, which is, like, separated it's very far. I feel like that's the same as being, like, polar bears are in Antarctica, black bears are in North America, but they're all bears. But Antarctica and North America are on the same planet, and we were all once Pangea, so it makes sense that if they had, like, evolved from the similar species they're in just the base gene. They're just space bears. Yep, they're just space bears. Okay. 
made it into Toontown, the cutest little land I ever did see. We are officially in the cartoon world. And Toontown reopened last year with this refreshed look. You can still go into Mickey and Minnie's houses. You can still do Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin. But they added Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. They added Good Boy Grocers and Cafe Daisy and judged a few things. And it's honestly so, so cute in here. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, when it opened, it was a fancy ride and had a virtual queue. Now it's included on Genie Plus if you want to skip the line or it's just a regular standby queue. I would say this is one that if the line's not too long, this queue is fantastic. It's so cute the way they've done it. They have props from Mickey cartoon shorts, like his costumes he would have worn, like in 3D in the flesh, like they made them. It's very meta, but it's adorable. There's tons of Easter eggs and nods to different attractions and Mickey moments throughout history. Again, lots of them are pointed out in that Secrets video or in our D100 video. And so if the line's not too long, I do recommend going through the full queue here because you're gonna skip a lot of that if you go through the lightning lane. That said, we are going through the lightning lane today because that's the whole point of this video. And it has a 55 minute wait, which is a long time. So we are about ready to tap in at the El Capitoon Theater. I've been to New Toontown like five times and I've never seen Pete. Pete made his character debut here and I've literally never even laid eyes on him. And we were walking to get in line and he walked right by. As Molly mentioned before, outside of the queue, there's very little that differs between this attraction here in Disneyland and what you can find in Disney's Hollywood Studios in Walt Disney World. This attraction has no high requirement and follows Mickey and Minnie on one of the classic journeys filled with hijinks, a bunch of fun, a lot of laughs, and all of your favorite characters. That really is just the cutest attraction. It always makes me smile whenever I ride it. And it's not one I prioritize here just because it is so similar to the one in Disney World. But I do love that queue if you can go through standby. And it is a good one to use a lightning lane on because it is so popular. The posted wait time for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, wow, it's a mouthful, was 60 minutes. And we got to the pre-show in about five. Note that Disney stops that queue time when you reach the pre-show. So we are going to treat it the same way on our end. Once we tapped in, went ahead and looked to book something else, and I was choosing between the Matterhorn and Space Mountain, which are the last two attractions on our list in this park. And I went ahead and booked the Matterhorn, and it was supposed to be at like 4.10, which is over an hour, about an hour and a half from when it was. And then after I clicked select, it said, note, your time has changed as you go to book it. And normally that's not a good thing. It's normally pushing it out, but the genie gods actually fiddle faddled for me. And the new time they I was booking was for about 25 or 30 minutes from when I was looking, which is a mazing and a real treat. Timekeeper. How long have we been doing this? We've done five rides so far. What is our time stamp? Current time stamp, three hours and 40 minutes. That's pretty good. Five rides, three hours and 40 minutes. Now I do have good news. The good news is we can ride the Matterhorn in like 10 minutes. The bad news is two of the attractions that are on our list are down for technical difficulties. One being Spas Mountain and one being the Incredicoaster. And the Incredicoaster has been down for a long time at this point and is no longer distributing lightning lanes, which is a bad sign because if they're not sure if an attraction's going to come back up, they cut off the distribution of lightning lanes because they don't want too many people to book it and then not be able to ride that attraction and have to recover it and so on and so forth. So may have to come up with some backup attractions to hit our goal of 10. But that's just something that can happen during any theme park day, so we're going to roll with it. We're going to do our best, and we're really going to hope that those attractions come back up. The monorail is right there. You gave it away. She scared me. 
The Matterhorn Bobsleds is the oldest roller coaster in the park. It's the first steel roller coaster of its kind, and yet it is still one of the most popular attractions here. It has an 80 minute wait, y'all. That's longer than Rise of the Resistance. I guess a lot of people need a back adjustment. It has a 42 inch height requirement. That's 42, and I love this attraction. It makes me giggle like no other. It maybe causes slight discomfort. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> it's, I mean, it throws you about, and that is all the more fun to me. If you didn't come off the Matterhorn with a bruise, did you even ride the Matterhorn? What a tagline. <laughs> also, what's bizarro to think about is when this attraction opened, they literally had actors and like cast members like scaling it in little later hosen, like mountain climbers. Like that was like part of the set pieces. Also, the sky buckets went through it. Oh, to have been at Disneyland in the 60s. Oh, before ultra. All right, we've tapped in at Matterhorn, which means we can book another lightning lane. Space is still down. Everything else on our list is in the other park. I think we have to call Big Thunder up off the bench. What do you think? It's time to come to the big leagues. Big Thunder's coming to the big leagues. Big Thunder and Space, those were our last two choices for this park. And we put it kind of in a toss-up, but put Space on the list initially. But it's been down for hours, and I think in, in order to be as fast as possible, we need to move it to another attraction. So I'm going to move it, book Big Thunder at 420, which is about 55 minutes from now. I'm going to fiddle faddle a little bit to see if I can get it closer, though. <laughs> oh, that's not good. You know, my back does feel different than five minutes ago. Anyway, I fiddle faddled and was able to get a Big Thunder Round Railroad for right now. Also acquired this. Delectable treat. Cheesy garlic bread from Edelweiss Snacks. Right across from the Matterhorn. Look at that, look at all that cheese. It's so good, y'all. Yeah. One of the best theme park snacks ever. Cheers. Oh. You know, on this trip, we're gonna have to make the combo. Mm -hmm. This plus bagel barbecue meat skewer. Mm. It's so good. This is the way. Yep. All right, let's head to Big Thunder yep. while we eat this. Look at all that cheese. Forgot to mention that we waited about 10 minutes to get onto the Matterhorn Bob sleds. Big Thunder Mountain is the wildest ride in the wilderness. That takes you through a abandoned mine town. It has a 40, that is four zero inch high requirement and currently a 25 minute wait time. That is the shortest I've seen it all day. It was 40 mere minutes ago when we were booking this lighting lane, but this one does tend to wane and wax a little bit more than some of the other attractions. So this is one that is a great use of a lightning lane because it can get really long, but I wouldn't put it as high priority as Indiana Jones Adventure or Mickey Minnie's Runaway railway or Matterhorn. Great news and credit coaster is back up and has lightning lanes for about half an hour from now so I went ahead and booked that one for fear it might go down again later. Also could have booked Guardians for within an hour. Also could have done Radiator Springs Racers for within an hour. So we are definitely in the home stretch right now and I'm very glad and credit coaster is back. after getting off of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. What a wild time that was. While the posted wait time was 25 minutes, we waited eight minutes before we got on and were able to ride that attraction. So a pretty decent little time savings there. And as Molly mentioned, we are on our way out of Disneyland to make the 
90 second walk <laughs> to park hop into Disney California Adventure so that we can ride the Incredicoaster. Made it across the way into California Adventure, grabbed our sweatshirts because it has dropped like 15 degrees since we started this and are headed towards Incredicoaster. That is one of my best tips when packing for any Disney park, but especially Disneyland, pack layers because the sun, 70 something in the sun feels amazing. When the night falls and you get that dry air, it is chilly here. Speaking of the night, I know I said part of the reason we were hopping to Disneyland earlier was because some of these attractions are better at night. I did not think we'd be back so quickly, <laughs> but I'm very competitive. So I'd rather ride them and shorten our time than wait for dusk to fall. But I will say, pro tip, Incredicoaster and Radiator Springs Racers especially, better at night. Incredicoaster has a 48, 48 inch height requirement and it is a roller coaster themed to, you guessed it, the Incredibles. It's a really fun coaster and I think that the overlay they did here from the California Screaming Coaster is really great. The tunnels with the added story elements is fun. It's the only attraction in Disneyland, either park to go upside down. So it's definitely the most thrilling coaster here. And it currently has a 60 minute wait. I'm thinking this will be a longer lightning lane experience because it was down for so long and if an attraction is down they give you a redemption that you can use at that attraction whenever it comes back up or select other attractions so sometimes the lightning lane does get a little bit backed up if an attraction had a long downtime because now anybody that had a redemption pass can come whenever they want a couple of pro tips for starters if you ever get an experience redemption pass it'll get automatically issued to you if that attraction is down go ahead and book another genie plus lightning lane because that doesn't count as your lightning lane anymore Experience redemptions are their own thing, much like David S. Pumpkins. Additionally, if you're at Disneyland especially, make sure you look at that list of attractions that you can redeem it on, because there are several attractions that do not have a Genie Plus, but will accept your experience redemption. Several of those Fantasyland attractions, the Pixar Pal Around, AKA Mickey's Death Wheel, those will take experience redemption passes. So in my opinion, you should use your experience redemption pass at one of those that you want to ride and has a longer line, and then try to rebook the Lightning Lane for whatever attraction that you got it for. If you could have one of the Incredibles powers which one would you want? Violet. Violet. You want four shields? What? You want shields? I mean, the the possibilities of that power are literally limitless. I mean, you can contain everybody else's power. I want Jack Jack. You just want you just want all the power. He has all the powers. You want D all of the above. Yeah. Feels feels like a cheat code, but I'm here for it. All right, booking our next attraction. We have two left. One is a fancy ride, and one is uh, a regular Genie Plus attraction. Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. 90-minute queue. I can get a Lightning Lane for 610. It's 447 right now. Radiator Springs Racers, our fancy ride, available at 450, which is any second now. So I'm going to go ahead and book Guardians. So we've got that locked in, and then I'll book Radiator Springs Racers so we can do that next. coaster check what a fun fun ride that is and now we're headed to cars land by way of san francisco and look at these fun lights huh? these were not here last time we were i love this land it is yeah. so awesome and so fun i did a video about this and tiana's when they opened up but truly this land is is lights out except for lights on because they're they're new lights get it Cars Land is just so freaking cool and pretty and beautiful and this is just a immaculate land. The level of theming is great. As somebody who doesn't even love the Cars franchise, I know Molly said that before, but I'll repeat it. This land is just beautiful. As Molly mentioned, Radiator Springs Racers is the fancy ride here in Disney California Adventure and we paid $19 per person for this attraction. 
It currently has a 60 minute wait. So we'll see how that compares for our experience. That is for zero inch high requirement. And this attraction is everything that Test Track wishes it was. <laughs> And by that, I mean, it uses the same ride technology that's found on Test Track, but also includes great theming, a dark ride experience, and a fantastic story. <laughs> so, what I'm saying is Test Track, step your game up. Do you think we're going to win, Malls? I do think we're going to win. You do? All right. I feel the need, the need for speed. Can you bet on it? Molly, get your head in the game. I think we can work this out. Yeah, we're going to go our own way. I'm breaking free uh, from the other car. And we're going Complete. Unfortunately, we lost, but there's no losers if you get to ride Radiator Springs Racers, except for us, because we lost. I'm not competitive. It's not a problem. It's fine. And we are ironically back where we started in Avengers Campus to go ride Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, which, just for funsies, I fiddle-faddled and moved up to right this very second. We had a time in about 45 minutes, which on a normal day, I would just accept and go get a drink or a snack or something, but we're in it to win it, and this is a timed experience today. So happy we could move that up. And now we're gonna go end with my favorite ride in this park. Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout used to be Tower of Terror, but it was rethemed. Still has a 44.0 inch height requirement though, and I love this theming so much. Basically, the collector has captured the Guardians as part of his collection, and Rocket is gonna break them out, but he needs your help. And of course, chaos ensues. But just like Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind over in Epcot, one of the fun things about this attraction is you don't know what song you're going to get. There are five different songs, different songs than the ones over in Epcot, and I really, really hope we get Jackson 5. And start! What an awesome, awesome attraction. What a way to end the adventure today. Uh, speaking of, Alan, what was our time total? Our total time spent was just under six hours. Six hours to ride 10 of the best attractions in Disneyland across the two parks. As a reminder, it took me nine and a half hours to do this in Walt Disney World. And yes, it does take a lot longer to get between the parks in Walt Disney World, which is a factor. I also didn't stop for any snacks throughout the Walt Disney World video, and we had many a delicious snack here at Disneyland. And I think most importantly, I never felt rushed. I never felt hectic. I didn't have to be on my phone quite as much fiddle faddling. It was very easy to accomplish this, where at Disney it involved a lot more strategery and a lot more effort and kind of manipulating the system to get everything in the order I wanted it to be. And if you want to talk about time, actually spent in lines versus the advertised wait time. In total, all the attractions had an advertised wait time of 515 minutes, which is eight and a half hours. And we spent 60 minutes in queues for Lightning Lane. That's that is one hour. One better. hour. You know, learn from the best. Stephen Strange. Well d done. Well, to take my calculations even further, if you look at the total cost of Genie Plus per person and break it down on all of the attractions that we rode today that are a part of Genie Plus, it comes to $3.75 per person per attraction. 
So obviously it's a bummer that Genie Plus costs money now when there used to be a free system that does it. But as you can see, it really does help save a lot of time waiting in your Disneyland trip. And again, it is so much easier to use here. Again, we strolled in at 1030 and we're able to do this many attractions. There's no 7 a.m. wake up call. Fancy rides function a little bit easier. And just because there's such a local crowd here, not as many people are purchasing Genie Plus. So on an average day, it's pretty easy to get the thing you want next relatively close and then if you're a normal person not doing some kind of challenge like we are that's when you add in those snacks that's when you add in those filler attractions or entertainment and we're not done yet for the day no there are attractions that still have lightning lanes available and there's still time in the day the park's nowhere near close in fact i'm going to check to see if anything's out for the whole day stand by standing by update Looking at the remainder of the day, you could get a lightning lane for literally any attraction that offers you a lightning lane in Disneyland with several, several hours of park time left. Four hours of park time in Disneyland, over four hours there, over two hours here in California Adventure. The furthest out lightning lane in this park is like an hour away, and the furthest out in Disneyland is two hours away. So again, compare that to Disney World, where attractions like Slinky Dog Dash, Remy's Ride to Adventure, Frozen Ever After run out within like often minutes, if not of just a few hours of the park being open. It really is so much easier to use here. And with that, I think we have proven our thesis that we set out to prove this morning, and that is that Genie Plus as a system typically works better in Disneyland. Hopefully you found this video helpful with lots of tips and tricks on how to use Genie Plus and fancy rides when you're in Disneyland next. I will leave you one last pro tip before we sign off. Another difference between the systems here in Disney World and Disneyland is that if you purchase Genie Plus here, all of your photo pass photos are included. That includes your on-ride photos as well as like character photos or photos in front of the castle. Anything with photo pass a day you purchase Genie Plus is included. So make sure you link those cards up and download those. That is not the case in Walt Disney World. And until next time, friends, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join the conversation with the man fam about this video or any other video, join us on Discord. The links for all that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has truly been so magical. It really has been. I think what would make it more magical yeah. is a trip to Pim's Tasting Lab oh, for always. a celebratory beverage. Always. Pim's is the happiest place on earth. It is. This is the way. I think we're saying the wrong franchise. We are. Yeah. Anyway, it's that way. Okay. Yeah. Bye. This is the way. That, yeah, exactly. Yeah, literally. Literally that way. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go.